Last time on CIP. I'm not going to slap on Lord of the Rings when I want to fuck someone. She mentioned her favorite was Dune. And I was like, oh no, that can't be good. I got to say, I, I, was, I was having a shitty Monday until this conversation. Today, we are joined by Adam Fields, the owner, illustrator, and graphic designer of Midnight 27 Studios and the creator of the hit comic book series, Prowl. You can see my room behind me. There's a lot of dead space there. Uh, I'm going to at least, at least buy a poster or something. I can't afford a car, but at least a poster. <laughs> you know what? I support you, man. Do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Izzy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that. well, I think, you know, like, uh, yeah, the with the t- I think I think a big reason why like a, the crisis gets thrown onto it is because, you know, because of the cliches I mentioned before about, you know, it's like I need to change everything about my life. And so they think it's a, you know, and 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 also a lot of times they make rash, <laughs> stupid decisions, um, at least in the cliche of like, yes, I'm going to completely throw away everything I've built so far to start something new. Which I, you know, yeah, I think it's kind of ridiculous. Though I've seen, <laughs> I've I've had um, people I know, very close people I know, do, do that. Um, uh, one is living in my house, um, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I moved out. I moved out. I moved out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You moved across the country. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Never did it. Never <laughs> um, but yeah. So can I direct you, you to a couples counselor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Named Adam Fields. Adam is our official counselor. Thank you for counseling us. Yes. I'm look I'm looking for a second one, but anyway. Um <laughs> so uh yes. Per- so, perfect segue. Perfect segue from, yes. from that into <laughs> from, from that into uh welcome. This is our holiday holiday episode. Uh as you can see the tree behind me. One of my few possessions. It's as festive as it's going to get. Uh, so, so, so nothing. Nothing says festive it's, like. Uh, okay, I I say this in the most, you know, like I, but I got to say that tree. It it looks like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree from a gay pride parade. It's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's fantastic, yeah. and I mean that in like in the fact that I love it. Like I love sure, it. Sure. Sure. But it's the Charlie sure. Brown Who's Christmas tree from a gay pride parade. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so I think I think if I if my understanding is correct, what you are saying is is that Ed, there was a gay pride parade that Charlie Brown went to, and uh-huh. this was the tree he took. Potentially, yes. I've and I've been I've been to I've been to the gay pride parade in New York. Yes, we, we both. And have. that's fun. That's a fun parade. A Let me tell you. Fun. Yes, it's especially fun whenever you didn't know you were coming up on it. Like we we literally turned the corner and we were like, "What the hell is happening?" And then we realized what was happening. We were like, "Oh, sweet!" And we just could like hung out, you know. But uh, <laughs> but that that tree could fit right in. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it, 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 fair. No, that, that's fair. That's fair. And, I, and so I will uh, before before we get to things that actually matter besides me talking. Uh, that tree. I do live obviously in West Hollywood. West Hollywood is famous for basically having a gay pride parade every day. Uh, and I found and, I, and, I, and my na- my roommate and I found that tree somewhere. So mm-hmm. you can do the math and connect the dots. And uh, what you said it. isn't entirely untrue. How can I move to West Hollywood? I would like to go. <laughs> I, I tried so hard to drag you with me to, to L.A. I, I volunteered to fold myself into a tiny little ball and stick myself into your luggage. But yes. no. You did. But the, cops, cops, the, cops, the, cops, the cops were like a black man. Yeah, well, fuck the it. cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas oh. to all. And to all a Charlie Brown <laughs> night. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, and so you Adam, see? your character. Um, <laughs> so Adam, smash cut, smash cut, please, smash cut. <laughs> oh, wow. That's tough to follow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> please, please. I'm, like, I'm, I'm literally begging you. <laughs> I can hear the cops knocking right save now. Us. Save us. Save us. <laughs> FBI, open up. <laughs> That's great. So please tell us, uh, dear, dear, sweet Adam Fields. Adam Fields, who is one of my dear buddies, who is one of the, the one of the first rules in the business uh, is to surround yourself with people that make you look better. 
And Adam has done that consistently for years on, on multiple projects that I've worked with him on. And this one in particular is one of his babies. His This is essentially his, uh, his masterpiece. And uh, I will let him you know, get into more, deals, more details about it as, uh, as Ari draws. Awesome. Yeah, so behind me is Prowl. That's the title <laughs> of the, the book, and that is who she's going to be drawing today. And basically, he's a vigilante werewolf. That's Ooh. it in a nutshell. But the extended version of it is, I played on that premise of, what if the wolf in sheep's clothing was there to protect the herd? So uh-huh. based in a really small town, because that's where I'm from. Literally, we have cornfields. Like, that's it. We're in cornfields and a Walmart, okay? There's a Dollar General that pops up <laughs> every now and then. Something goes out of business. You know how they are. But we, um, you know, we don't have a lot of excitement here. There's not a lot of stuff that goes on. And I'm sick and tired of seeing gigantic cities get destroyed and demolished because our tax money is paying to fix all those buildings. So I wanted to put something in a small rural town like me. Um, so. I came up with this idea back in the eighth grade with a werewolf that fights crime. That's back when underworld and Van Helsing sort of came out and I'm like, man, those werewolves look sweet. Why are they bad? I want to make them look sweet. I want to make them look good. So I sort of set this guy, but I I needed a way for him to transform and I didn't want to have to use the moon because that's overdone. So um, I have on him. Can I show what he looks like? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's your stuff. This is this is Prowl. This is issue one. This little stone right there is where his power comes from. That is what transforms him. So day or night, it does not matter. He can turn into the werewolf. Um, as for the you know the the character design, um, I sort of modeled him sort of after my two boys. I have a blonde hair, blue eyed boy, and a brown hair, brown eyed boy. So the wolf has brown fur, and his eyes are bright blue. So it's kind of a a mix of them. Um, You know, he's actually able to talk. He's actually able to communicate um, even in his wolf form, which kind of freaks people out. Not that a seven foot tall (laughs) wolf is standing there, but he's talking to me and I understand him. (laughs) So, you know, that's kind of it. The rumor mill is running rampant with this, um, you know, this, this urban legend of this wolf and people are chalking up the drugs. You know, we always have ODs everywhere in town. Um, mm-hmm. that's like our biggest mm-hmm. thing, our drugs and, and opioids and stuff like that. So that's kind of a, a big underlying issue in, in the book. And that's what they chalk this up to. They're like, oh, they're just high. And you know, they didn't see this. <laughs> but that stone he wears is actually part of a really deep, dark history in the town that only a select few people know about. And they want to keep it quiet. They have an alternative motive. They have something sinister they want. And he has it, and they need it back. So he's kind of unearthing some stuff that he really shouldn't have been messing with. And that's where we're getting into in Volume 2. Um, right now I have issues 1 through 7 out. I, I actually just did a, a variant cover for uh, another Facebook group. And uh, I'm actually, I have Volume 2 over at um, a proofreader and editor right now to get checked out and see where I went wrong. So um, <laughs> you know, we know how editors are. So, you know, Prowl, you know, it's it's basically just in a nutshell, it's a werewolf story that is not like anything else. He's not tied to the moon. He, you know, he doesn't shred his clothes because I had I wanted to find out a way to uh, to make it so he didn't have to explain why he's going through pants and shirts all the time. (laughs) He's like a 20 some year old dude and he works. He's a welder and a, a, a manufacturer and he can't keep buying clothes like that, you know? So right, right. yeah, he, uh, yeah, I wanted to change it up a little bit. So that's, that's Prowl in a nutshell. He's there to protect everybody and uh, all around. He's just a good dude, but the only downfall is if he keeps that stone on too long and stays in the wolf form, it gets messy because he loses control of himself very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. So it's, okay. it's, uh, that's always it's a kind of, uh, no, that's, that's, that's great. And I, and, and I, so I uh, full disclosure, I have read some of Prowl, not all of it, some of it though. Yep. But um, the, the, the and I can't remember. Is it meant to be in a way analogous to the stone, analogous like to the One Ring, and that it's meant to, it, it it kind of over time corrupts the user? Is that what mm-hmm. it is in a way? Okay. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. yeah. basically, 
it's if he stays in a wolf form for like more than an hour he kind of starts getting these animalistic urges he can't control his thoughts he can't you know he almost can't speak until he removes it issue four dives really deep into that and that's probably one of my favorite issues just because of the scenes that play out when he right sort of loses himself yeah that one has the, the cover that's uh the, the, the yeah the main the cover everyone likes the most yeah uh, more or less yeah okay. and, the fan favorite you know, cover. we have to explore too like when he does lose himself you know he has to live with it he had he retains all his thoughts and memories when he's back to a human so you know he's in full you know control over everything except when that happens but those memories go back so he does sort of have some ptsd after sure. you know the events and you know it's yeah. it's kind of fun to explore um to see how would he play that out because he just thought he was just going to deal with dudes graffitiing walls and breaking into cars and then he deals with some really serious stuff and uh where it's life-threatening and um he realizes this is a game changer he's got to do something to uh to take care of it the main character's name's alex by the way he uh okay. you know he lives he's lived in this small town his entire life um mm-hmm. never really mm-hmm. went to a big city never really got out of the uh the the cornfield you know town he's you know he's kind of uh ingrained in it um okay. but his grandfather who has passed away is was actually his 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 idol that was his role model um kind of a key player in the city um he run he his grandfather founded this manufacturer this this um fabrication shop um and through that he was able to fund other small businesses to help them get a start so he was really a caring guy, but he passed away su- suddenly of a heart attack, so to speak. And uh, he, um, you know, it sort of hit Alex hard because the new owner has doesn't have the passion that, you know, his grandfather did for the, the facility. The The city has seemed to forget who sort of helped everybody. And there's no memorial or anything. He just sort of has a bitter taste in his mouth about how, you know, how could you forget someone who was that impactful in this community? So, you know, he's okay. sort of stuck in this town, but doesn't have a, uh, a, uh, you know, a, a grasp on, you know, how to leave. And yeah, it's doesn't sort of, a, right now. and you said he's, he's 20, what's his age? He, he's 22. 22. Okay. Yeah, so 22. Uh, that's a, I think that paints a very, and thanks. Thanks for sharing all that, Adam. I think it puts a, a pretty good, pretty vivid picture there. And we don't want too, too much because obviously we need to leave, leave room for his this story. He's in play. Oh yes. But then we have a <laughs> uh, a good backstory for the character Alex there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. I see I, wow. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's I, I would like to read it now, and I will do so. <laughs> it, it, yes. It is, yes. Definitely a fun one. Yeah. Actually, that, 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 I, good. 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 Go ahead. I was just going to say that I was I was excited that um, that like there, there's actually a story that I can go read now. So that makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually waiting for the reprints to, to hit because I, I honestly every time I set up somewhere, I sell out. So um, oh, nice. It, I've, yeah, I'm waiting for uh, reprints of, I think, issue two and three. If I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, once they get in, I'll actually I'll hook you guys up. Oh, nice. Very much nice. obliged. Very much obliged. Yeah. So. This so what we're going to do, Adam, uh, mm-hmm. and I know you are somewhat familiar with the show. What we're going to do now is we are going to more or less take a pair of tweezers, pick up young Alex, pluck yes. him from your world, and put him into one of ours that we're going to make uh, from scratch. So Nathan Beatty Jr. the third, do you uh-huh. have the wondrous die ready to conjure up? It is ready to go. Know? Is it is it one d ten? Is that correct? <laughs> I'm afraid so. I'm afraid so. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that. Three. That one faked me out a little bit. It was like, is it going to be a one? Is it going to be a seven? <laughs> Thank it's you. a three. Jesus. Three. So here's the thing. This list has been has had a couple of uh, options that have been on since the beginning, believe it or not. This is one of those two. One of the two left. And it is okay. espionage. Okay. Remember that? Yeah, it already knows. It was literally one of the first. It's, it's number three. It was one of the first ones on here, and it has not been drawn. It's been everything else has gone out like a, the last little puppy in the in the pound. Espionage mm-hmm. finally gets his day. So good job. All right. Good job. Okay, and now we're doing 
setting. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that's another D- one D ten. Yes, sir. All right. Ha-ha. Seven. All right, and seven. Um, so seven is one. <laughs> seven is it's such a tricky one because I had to I had to swap out seven every week. It seems so. This week <laughs> after I swapped. <laughs> As I, after I swapped it out, it's actually swapped out for cold climate. Uh, okay, so okay. it is cold climate. It is cold climate. It was it was spooky, spooky location, and the new setting was cold climate. Okay, so it was cold. Climate. That's right. We did cold climate in our first episode, but I think we're like thirty episodes in. We can. Yeah, it's, it's we the, can because everything else was because our settings we only have uh, twenty choices for settings. Uh, mm-hmm. 22, we have 22, then we have 10 that stand in there, and they've all been swapped out and rotated a lot of times now. They've all been used, mm-hmm. basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, except for, like, okay. pirate ship. Thing. Okay, uh, so now we're doing time. Yeah. Okay. And, ah, and I'm rolling it again because it said four, and the blind oh, eternities is not an option. Okay. <laughs> Three! Not for us hey. rolls, anyway. <laughs> hey, oh, <yeah>. cool. <laughs> Future. All right, so... Uh, the yes of course future we have that so yeah okay and then now we are um this is the you said 100 yeah for... and we're, so we're using the uh the, the truncated list to do the this truncated list okay yeah. and these are for the archetypes other than alex so these are the characters around alex yes okay so That's the right first alex. one yeah. uh 50 okay i mean it's it's fine because we will <laughs> I think we've actually had this before, even though it's a truncated list. It's minister. Do we have a minister? No, I don't think we've had a minister, like straight up. I don't minister. think we have one either. Yeah, I don't think we've had one no, either. I don't think I, I don't think so either. Plus, they can they can have a lot of fun with the, with a werewolf and a minister. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so so minister. We have not had that one. So we'll go ahead, yeah. Okay, and I'll throw it again. Hmm, thirty nine. Thirty nine. Let's see here. Ooh, perfect. Perfect. Innocent child. <laughs> that's not a, it's not a dirty the way I said it. I wasn't like Ooh, innocent child. I was I was saying like, oh. a little bit. All right, let's let's uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's kill, kill my mic. Kill, kill my mic. Kill my mic. <laughs> All right. That uh hmm. and on that note, let's go ahead and start writing the story. My word. Oh, please, the story. Please rewrite this story. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, so just a, a, a quick refresher for anyone who may have just joined or in case you have you know, a bad memory like I do. We rolled the genre of espionage, which is you know, spy, spy genre. Uh, we rolled the setting of a cold climate. We didn't get specific on it. It can be whatever we choose as long as it's cold. And the time period is the future. And the archetypes is archetype number 50, which is a minister. And archetype number thirty nine, which is an innocent child, um, mm-hmm. is a and is a leeway with all with, with all of these in some some uh, mm-hmm. some sense. Okay. So I want to like I've, I've I've actually had to try to keep this in the whole time because I didn't want to get into it until we got to this part. So you say that uh, it's uh, that he can only hold that stone for an hour. Uh, ish so does that mean that like he has to kind of strategically use it whenever he's quote unquote fighting crime like he's got a you know or like being a vigilante like he's got to strategically know like when to put it on and like is there like a cool down period from when he takes it off or can he like take it off and go <laughs> and then put it back on you know? <laughs> yeah 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 the cool down um basically there is a little bit of, of time he sort of has to gather his thoughts like it, it almost absorbed back in so i would say his, his cool down time i've never had to write it i would say give or take about 10 15 minutes just to okay almost as if you just worked out you know mm-hmm. and your body hurt then you're like you know i need to sort of relax you need that that cool down i would say mm-hmm. about 15 minutes to be fair okay mm-hmm. so now awesome. uh, this is another not to not to get we're getting really nerdy we're, we're getting a really complex shop guy from the simpsons but could he <laughs> game the system so to speak uh, so let, let's say he has to. He knows he has to try and sp- try and sprint ten miles, uh, and he can't quite do that. 
all in all in like an hour because of some kind of he has a broken leg or whatnot. Could he like remove the stone every ten minutes and put it back in, trying to like kind of like try to play it off so it doesn't he doesn't quite exhaust the entire hour at once? Oh, absolutely. Because the thing is, um, he has to strategically put it on. You know, he okay. doesn't want to do it in front of people. He doesn't want to. He can absolutely find a back alleyway, take it off, catch his breath navigate the the back ways and then get back in when he's you know he, he feels he's safe to do perfect. so perfect so yeah okay perfect that's uh, i love it uh i love also i love characters that have great powers and a trade-off obviously you know, being a mm-hmm. werewolf could be there's trade-offs in that in every in every sense but also just the power in of itself is a trade-off yeah. too uh how, yes. how you, you're able to use it okay so good okay cool deal cool deal uh ariana mm-hmm. did you have any any uh, hardcore nerd questions as well <laughs> uh can i marry this werewolf <laughs> sure. cool well, I think, my uh, hardcore nerd question is answered <laughs> sure enough. well i think i think it's important to like establish you know um like like i like you know i, I know and i know Adam, you probably already established these for for the comic, but um, but specifically so that we can know what we can do, you know, like is it a because I hear like I hear an hour, and you know, from a storytelling perspective, that's really interesting, but it does limit the story a little bit. It's not like like we can't be like okay, he puts it on and then like he's the werewolf for like six days. So I think right. that's um, you know. I, I will say that it is it's it's it um I like it because it, it lends a sense of danger. So yeah. in for example, in the Animorph series, a person can only be in morph for an hour or they get stuck forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um and so when you have this element with this character where if he wears this stuff, he's in danger of losing his humanity. Super mm-hmm. compelling. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and also, Adam, can we have a little bit of leeway, a, li- a liberty to take with the stories before we get going? Can oh. it be that the longer he wears it, just the kind of the more, the more he, he loses himself to the, his animalistic nature, essentially. So at minute 50, he's much more feral than he is at minute, minute five, so to speak. Oh, yeah. This, yeah, it okay. almost like okay. spawns, uh, spawns Gage, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, the gate. The, uh, yes, I know, the, I, I, I know that reference. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, geez, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has Perfect. been a minute. It is, well, I know, that's the 90s. <laughs> Woo, the 90s. Right. Perfect. Okay, all right then. Well, cool. That's a lot of really cool ingredients to put in our stew here. So the first thing we like to do, obviously, is deal with the characters. We've got our Alex character, which is a really cool, fun guy to play with. It's a no-brainer. He's going to be, I mean, they are a hero um, in this story. The idea of the minister, my first thought was villain. Uh, as someone who sees him as a beast or a monster, and of course, he could be bigoted towards him. However, the minister himself doesn't have to be like that. Actually, the, the villain, as far as like he's deliberately scalping babies and drinking their, you know, urine. It could be just the idea that he is opposing him, not understanding what he is. That's <laughs> <laughs> a strangely <laughs> specific example you offered there, Ethan. No, no kink shame, Ariana. No kink shame. I think I can in this instance. All right, fine. Um, King shame. King shame. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that yeah. works pretty well. Um, are we still going to set it in a small town? Yeah, yeah this, I mean, this, so Winnipeg, I'm sure you guys know, Winnipeg's like one of the coldest places in the world. It's also very small. So you can have a cold climate in a very small place like Winnipeg. It can mm-hmm. work fine that way. Or we mm-hmm. could go, we don't have to, but yeah, we can definitely do that, something like that. I think having the threat of a, a a minister in a small town, it kind of fits. Um, Cause I picture J. Jonah Jameson, who someone who doesn't necessarily understand Spider-Man, but um, doesn't want to either. Um, right. mm-hmm. You know, he's, all he cares about are those photographs. Exactly. He's the, <laughs> yeah. the antagonist. The minister yes. could actually see this as, as something demonic when it's really just something that's, you know, he, he, it's something completely different. Yeah, and he's actually there to help. Yeah, he's actually there to help. Um, that's a really and it could be that also the minister is using this as kind of like to generate 
quote unquote business for his parish, perhaps, uh, just to, mm-hmm. to like insinuate this climate of fear so that more people will attend church. And I'm not biased at all. <laughs> <laughs> As we hear her grinding her teeth through a mic. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, like, I like that idea too. It, it is a little bit to drum, drum up a bit of the, the, uh, the tithe. But uh, the, the, so the, that works. The idea, he's very much perfect analogy, Adam. He's a J. Jonah Jameson that in and of himself, he's not evil. He's not committing crimes, but he mm-hmm. can be very, very adversarial. Uh, yes in his own way mm-hmm. um so the, i see the innocent child as essentially the mission the innocent child could be the the mission it could mm-hmm. be something as if we're, if we're doing the from the standpoint of espionage it could be that alex uh is in this town lives in this small town we can, we can just go with um we can go with winnipeg as we, we mentioned it we can go with winnipeg because it's very very cold it's almost freezing and he's there because we can even milk the whole Hulk story that Adam mentioned before. There could have been an incident where he transformed into a werewolf to help somebody, uh, and he had to flee from that place. And he kind of, he's kept fleeing, kept fleeing, kept fleeing, trying to go to a place where no one knows him, where he's just completely, he can kind of get lost. Uh, no one cares about him. And so it's Winnipeg, and he's there. Um, and this child, this innocent child could go missing. And there could be an incident or something happens where, Alex uh, is aware of this kid or mumps into this kid, has a relationship with this kid, whatever it might be. Maybe he doesn't even know this kid, but knows someone that, that does know this kid. And no one's able to figure out how to get to this kid. No one's able to even figure out how to start tracking this kid. But because Alex has his abilities and his powers as a werewolf, he uses them, um, tries to use them incognito to try and uh, get, her, get her sent or figure out where she is or figure out what's happened um, just from the home. And we could have it that, of all people, the minister might see, either sees Alex in some capacity or at least um, thinks he sees of the werewolf that Alex is or something. Or maybe he hears Alex howl at night as he transforms in some way to, to start inciting the idea uh, of Alex being a menace. Uh, so we have our the setup oh, for the story. I'm sorry, go ahead, Ari. What if Alex saves his life? Ooh. And he mm-hmm. takes that as an opportunity to be a, a bit of an opportunistic dick. Perfect. I like that even more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yes. Uh, do you have any um, ideas the chat, as far as what? The chat had, a, had an interesting idea. Uh, the child could be a church patron daughter, and the minister and Wolf are both competing for the mission. That's Oh, for the mission to save, to, to save the child? Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. That. I like, I like that, that a lot. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think um, that would be interesting. Good job, chat. Yeah. Good job. Good job, chat. <laughs> good job. Great, great idea. <laughs> I love that idea. I love it. So, do you have? Do we have an idea as far? Because it, it, I guess espionage is in the sense that it's more of a clandestine operation, mm-hmm. you know, or it's kind of we don't know who done it. Also, but well, I the mm-hmm. go ahead, Nate. Well, I was just going to say with the um, overall. Um, thought of of espionage maybe maybe there's a we're saying a minister so maybe obviously we don't want to go with the obvious like catholic church but we could do something like a and it's in the future so we can create like our a separate type of religion type thing um construct that's a large like evil monolith that is into everything and 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 this minister is a minister of that religion and for some reason maybe there's a uh a hidden cadre of of leaders from this religion that kind of meet nearby because it's so off in the middle of nowhere um that you know, and that's kind of the espionage bit, like kind of just adding in that larger religious construct to get that espionage. I realize it's a bit of a shoehorn, but it's yeah. <laughs> no, no, it works. I, I like that idea. Well, the one thing that you mentioned too, I'd almost kind of forgotten that the time period is the future. So I love the idea that it's almost like a, it's almost a brand, not a brand new religion, but kind of like Scientology is a more recent religion. Um, oh, Scientology mm-hmm. too. So yes, yeah, it's like Scientology too. The, 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 this so time it's is personal. basically new age. Right, yeah, new, like a new age religion, so to speak. Uh, and it's, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the, the series The Vow on HBO or heard of it, but not to get into that, but just the idea that you could have a, a zealot who has a lot of followers and his message could be pretty, 
you know, pretty bizarre, pretty proactive, what have you, but he's very, he has these convictions. He's very strong in it. If you have a team of people like that that are following this zealot to do things in the future, the, you know, all, all, you could have anything. Uh, all, all, uh, all bets are off, essentially. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I like that, that idea that you brought up, Nate. That could definitely work. Um, and do you want to, we could, one, I mean, one route we could go is you, you mentioned other religions kind of coming together. It could be something that in this small town of Winnipeg that could almost be like some kind of like a tradition that these people have mm-hmm. where multiple religion, multiple religions, these new religions meet up essentially to discuss things or, or establish some kind of trade with each other, or whatever it is. Like, um, and it could be that one of these religions believes in human sacrifice of some kind. And they, the conditions had to be met properly for, for, for them to grab, for them to want someone. And it turns out that this young girl, this innocent child meets all those conditions. They take her, um, basically. And we can have it that. Ooh, so we're way. getting culty. Yeah, get a little culty. <laughs> That's the idea. Getting culty. Like, I like that idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Can't go wrong with cults. Cool. And, and again, you don't have to have it at the <laughs> I mean, you really, you, you really, you, really can. You but... can. You, you, I, I, I promise. But I, I, don't, I love I, them. In, I love them. In uh, fiction, we're not so showing all the evidence, <laughs> the mountain of evidence. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen that the, the minister himself is not part of this cult, but the minister himself is so zealous he doesn't want to hear anybody that does try to talk sense into him as far as the possibility that one of the other other churches that they brought to this congregation, this, this um convention, so to speak, this, this whole swath of other churches that have, that have come together for this gathering. He doesn't want to hear the idea that possibly one of them took this innocent child. He wants to explore the idea that this werewolf did instead, and that's it. Um, and they can still both be looking for the child, but it's just mm-hmm. that the minister is more or less looking in, in different ways than, than the mm-hmm. werewolf is. So are we... Be set, huh? So Adam? Could the werewolf actually be set up to be the one that's um, maybe has taken the child? That's it. There we go. They Ooh, need an yes. escape goat. They know mm-hmm. this this cult, this cult, this church. They know that they they need an escape goat. So yeah, we'll call it yes. Esca- an escape goat. An escape goat. An escape wolf. Escape goat. An, an escape wolf. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we can definitely have that. So he's he's framed. He's completely framed for the job, so to speak. Yeah, uh, and so I, think, of, I, I think so, that'd be good. Yeah. Go ahead, Nate. Yes, yes, yes. I was just going to say, I, I like that idea. And I, um, I, yeah, I think maybe it could be, it could be a thing where they, he finds out about the plot to, to murder the child uh, for the sacrifice. He saves the child, but in, in saving the child, the minister thinks that he's like that, that it's the, you know, like, Oh, it's him. He's the bad guy. We need to go after him. And then the people who are going to sacrifice a child were like, uh, yeah, it was him. And, you know, and, the, and perfect, perfect, perfect. They grab their okay. digital pitchforks and, and digital. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. You know, they're, they're torches. Yes. Yeah. So, the, the, so I'm, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the structure of the story. Then it could be that in act one or early on, he basically, or it could be that the cult is trying to kidnap the young girl, innocent child, uh, young girl or boy, whatever, innocent child, early on in the story. The werewolf actually stops this from happening, but the werewolf is caught with the child, essentially. And the child may be knocked out or is unconscious, is unable to actually say, no, they were the, he's actually saving me, these guys are kidnapping me, and the minister sees the werewolf with the kid in his, the kid in its hands. And as the werewolf tries to return the kid or have it and flee or leave, uh, the minister, of course, raises all bells and says, you know, it's a full-blown attack, full-blown war on this werewolf. And, of course, other cults are like, yeah, yeah, the werewolf did it. it was, he's all he's responsible for everything that happened. Um, and that could be the, the starting point. And we could have it again that either the, the cult completely loses interest in trying to get the girl or the cult uses the werewolf during the, as, as while he's... Um, part of the diversion or an escape goat, he pretty much sends all the other churches that are around, all the people, they go on a manhunt 
for Alex. And so Alex is pretty much mm-hmm. on the run from everybody in, in some sense, trying to find evidence or find a way to prove himself innocent. Meanwhile, some of the cult leaders or cult cultists could go back and kidnap the girl again. And um, it could be two, it could be basically two clocks ticking. One is Alex trying to prove his innocence. And two is also the girl not being sacrificed. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing that I think um, we forgot to establish, and, I, and I'm not sure, uh, Adam, how you have it set in your comic, but in this world, how freakish is it that this werewolf exists? Like, is this like a, holy shit, this is the first, this, is the, oh my God, they exist? Or is this like, oh, it's Tuesday and there's a werewolf on the street? You know, like, what, where are we on that scale? It is absolutely not a norm whatsoever that's why when these criminals do see him they do freak out that's why they they believe that it's just a a, a hallucination okay. that you know they, they were attacked by a wild dog and the the drug had mm-hmm. had uh made them think that it was a, a seven foot tall beast when really it's just a chihuahua but mm-hmm. <laughs> perfect perfect well, I think I think that would be interesting then to have it be at least within our story to kind of keep that the same and have it be almost like where Alex is. And, and again, I don't know, uh, since I haven't read your comic yet, I, I'm not sure how you play it in the comic, but I think it would be interesting in this story to have it be almost like he's the Wendigo where like, yeah, where he's this he does these vigilante things, but nobody's actually really seen him. and. Exactly. Like and he, and yeah, and he's become and he becomes kind of a scapegoat, and that's and like the minister doesn't even necessarily need to see him with the child. The minister just goes, "Oh, child, child kidnapped. Must have been that Wendigo guy who's been doing weird <laughs> shit in town." You know? Yeah. Yes, I love it. I like I love that. It. I like that. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. So if we go that the, we can have it that way. That instead of him actually, like you mentioned, Nate, he's kind of like a legend, larger than life legend. We can have it that instead of actually having to have Alex live in the town, he could live somewhere else and just be almost living in the mountains by himself. No one even knows where he is or what he, what he truly is by him on his own. Um, you can leave him a little more. Well, we could, we could play it a couple of different ways and I'm not, I'm not sure how y'all would want to take it, but we could have it be where he is in with the town, but like, but, He's Alex, so he's, you know, just normal, regular guy chilling around the town. But, you know, on for, you know, for shits and giggles on Saturday nights, he goes and fucks some shit up um, and make sure that, you know, the bad guys get theirs. Or it could be that he is out in the woods, like you said, and people know of him as well. Like he's just the weird guy who lives out in the woods by himself, who just likes to be alone. And then there's the Wendigo. And then there's like a rumor that maybe they're the same, but we're not sure, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, or we go a different. Yes, I like that. Just, there's just some no, ideas. no. So, so I had I had two quick ideas. One is that this is basically like Batman, in that he, of course, by day is Alex, by night is is the is the legendary, the Cape Crusader, the night the he's the third defender, Crusader. Like you mentioned. He's a yeah, <laughs> he's, yeah, he's a third Crusader, the third <laughs> Crusader, right? Um, and so when he, of course, the it, it could be that the he's out foiling crimes of a, of another nature. He sees people doing something else, something random. Um, and like you mentioned, the minister or somebody sees him, people have, people have ideas that he's around. Therefore there's already been speculation that he exists and he's a bad guy. And it could be that uh, one time, one night when he's out, he's doing it, doing his crime. He sees these guys trying to kidnap the young girl, the innocent child. I guess it's a girl. I keep saying girl, the innocent child. Alex gets in, Alex intervenes. He grabs a girl and he runs off trying to bring her back to the town. But before he can get back to town with the girl, um, the cult is, are able to stop him, and so it becomes Alex with the with the innocent child trying to find a way to sneak her back uh, into town, trying to sneak her back away from wherever the, these cultists have them, essentially wherever these cultists took her originally. That he's trying to bring her back from um, something like that. I'm trying to think, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of a, kind of a way to a story structure to have with this wolf versus the cultist. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm wondering with the religion piece. Um, so you mentioned multiple religions. 
do do we want it do we want it to be because because this this is this place is kind of out in the middle of nowhere yeah yeah so do we want it to be like like where i said like where there's the there's the peace happening where it's their secret you know meeting spot where all the religions come together one idea i i thought of is is having this be a splinter off of the main religion um, that could be a, a piece. Um, like how, like, how does that, like, I, I guess, and maybe that could be the jumping off part of the story is kind of getting a little bit of the, the, um, background and finding out and maybe even seeing how Alex fits into this. Like, is this, is he, is he a, um, a former recovering member of this religion or is he, you know, like, like, how do we want to play that? Ah. Uh. I, I had an idea, Adam. Not to. I'm, I'm not sure how you. If I think you had some idea, something in your brain cooking too. Oh yeah. Well, I was gonna okay. say, what if he is, has no clue about the religion? Mm, okay. What if he's brand new to town and has no clue? He's trying to start over. Mm-hmm. Right. That'd be what, interesting. So what we can have it our kicking. I like too. that. We can have it that, because then. Oh, uh, okay. So. I like it because that that means we we're obviously seeing this whole situation through Alex. It means we get to learn about mm-hmm. all the mm-hmm. fucked up shit that's happening, kind of in a nice, slow, steady drip. Yep. Yeah, I exactly. like that. Exactly. That's and, a really but good here's point. Here's a turn. Uh, here's a turn. We can actually have it. We can have it that Alex is new to town. Alex doesn't know what's going on. There is this big, huge, dominant religion that tends to like be the the heart of this this city, but there are there is a splinter sect that's kind of much more radical that has broken off, and they're doing their things in the frozen tundra over here. Um, and someone might, as Alex is in the town, he's doing his thing. Alex uh, may have to like you know transform briefly to save a person from a, a car crash or whatever it is. And someone that's in this cult, that's in a smaller sect, sees it. And they believe that he is the famed legendary Wendigo. He is the thing that they praise or worship, what have you. Mm-hmm. And so they want actually they actually want to sacrifice this innocent child to Alex. And they orchestrate this thing to basically have a massive ritual where this girl is presented to Alex, hoping that he'll kill the girl. Um, and they may actually literally kidnap both of them and place them because to get into the espionage angle using the futuristic tech or whatnot, they basically kidnap both Alex and this innocent child, and they put them in this crazy, you know, sanctuary shrine, whatever it is. And, um, and they, and they find out what the actual ability that Alex has with the, with the stone. They kind of force him to transform into a wolf and they put her, they put him right in front of the, the child, essentially. And once Alex is in front of the child, as opposed to killing it, he grabs a girl and, and flees. Mm-hmm. And so part of it is him actually trying to figure out how to escape this iron fortress with this, with this child and as, Alex, as Adam said, he only has an hour to do it as a wolf, or he can remove it sometimes to do things, but it's kind of like he has to, he basically has to find a way to escape this impenetrable fortress with a whole bunch of cult, you know, cult, uh, cultists trying to kill them, kind of trying to make him kill this girl within an hour, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do like that. I, I like that making him a part of the, like making them mistaking him for a, uh, uh, a god or a demigod yeah. of the religion. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. A demigod of the religion. Yeah. And we can have it that with our minister character, not to backtrack too much, but he could be our, we could either have, we could still have, we could have uh, one minister that is very much the J. Jonah Jameson. We have another minister character that very much like praises and worships him and expects him to be that much more, expects him to, he sees him as this demonic god, essentially. And he's leading these other cultists in this. Uh, fortress uh, against, you no, know, for him essentially against this girl in a way. Mm-hmm. I, I had a thought. Um, yeah. What if we Go had, so, so we have, we have the, so we have the, the minister and, and, and the, the idea that Ethan just had, but I also thought of another thing that I think we need to do that will push us firmly into the espionage territory that I think we're kind of lacking at this point. We're still kind of, we we need a little that little bit of push. Agree. So I think after he he grabs the girl and he's trying to get out of this fortress, um, 
he's you know they're sneaking around like eh, maybe a little bit after this they're they're going around and they get to a point where they think they're done they their goose is cooked they're they're cor- they're cornered and they get grabbed by a, a a a disciple of some sort and they get thrown into a storeroom and the disciple comes in and goes what the fuck are you doing who are you here you're about to blow everything and it's a plant like it's a it's a it's a spy like essentially this is a spy who mm. has been infiltrating mm-hmm. this yeah. organization yeah, yeah they've been in, in, infiltrating the cult to try to save people and maybe it doesn't have to be from a government agency it could just be somebody from like a concerned family like we a really rich family that said we're we're paying you to save our daughter because she got brainwashed by these lunatics and this guy you know basically goes i've been trying to infiltrate this forever and you show up. Who the fuck are you, and what the fuck is going on? And I think that would that that might be an interesting way to take it. Yes, I completely agree. I like what, that. I love it because also the idea is this cult is as crazy and fanatic as things they may have done in the past have been. They've never tried to do a, a human sacrifice because essentially to them they haven't had the Wendigo. But now that the mm-hmm. Wendigo is back, they think well, it's a Wendigo, and part of the legend of the Wendigo is he has to have human sacrifices, innocent children. So therefore, we need to do this. And so he's so Alex has inadvertently made a whole new, you know, whole new uh, <laughs> clusterfuck yeah. because of his presence being just being there essentially. Uh, exactly. So now yeah. The, 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 yeah, they're trying to figure out how to get how to get out of this. So yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That works a lot, I think. Uh, that does. Yeah. yeah. I like the idea of having so like someone infiltrate the group that you know the you know they didn't know about. Right. That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, uh, and we could have a thing too where to kind of play along with, along with the canon of Alex and the and Prowl. The he, he's pretty much like you're a werewolf, can't you? The 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 spy could say you're a werewolf, can't you change back to a human? And can we kind of try to get out of here in a more uh, undercover manner? He's like, I can't. The the stone is. It could be some kind of rule where if it's done at a certain time, or the cult may have put some kind of incantation on it or something to make it so he can't transform. And, and Alex is like, I can't, I can't change, change, change back. I can't remove it for some reason. I don't know what's going on. I, I'm confused too. And Alex is like, oh, by the way, the longer I wear this thing, the worse it's going to get. I have, about a, I have literally about an hour before things go, things go from bad to fucked. So uh, like something like that. Mm-hmm. It could, it could be interesting. I, I, I just find, I think there being a joke in there. I think there has to be a point where. Um, where he's he's Alex in in this situation, and and they've they're with this spy guy, and um, this could be very early on, and and it could be like the guy looks out the window and he sees the moon and he looks at me, he's like, okay, change, and the guy's like, what do you mean change? He's like, well, it's a full moon, change into a werewolf, and he's like, that's how it works, that's dumbass. Not- <laughs> yeah, it's not how the force works, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's yeah, not, exactly. That's, not, that's not the force works. Uh, Gosh, why, that, why does that movie exist? But yes, because uh, yeah. uh, it's good. No, no, no I mean, fight I mean, me, the, the, meet the me in the pit. Guy, no, I'm thinking of the. <laughs> <laughs> that became your catchphrase. It just became your catchphrase. <laughs> meet me in the pit. Meet me, uh, me in the pit. Meet me in the pit. Yes. Uh, yeah, but, but I like the idea of it. You definitely have the mm-hmm. a slight buddy cop angle between the spy and Alex, and mm-hmm. any whether he's in a werewolf form, a human form, whatever it is. Uh, and then, of course, the, they're trying to their their mission, more or less, is to get the girl out of this this base uh, into mm-hmm. safety in some capacity. Um, yes, yeah, so so that's a that's a fantastic start. Um, that's a great setup for, for Act One, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and I, um, yeah, and I think I think for for next week when we do Act Two and Act Three, we can start getting into the actual escape and the deeper like because i think part of the espionage thing to it is it should be that there is a much larger thing happening here that i think it would be interesting to have alex alex's appearance has set it off yes it's it's started things in motion that weren't supposed to go into motion until either later or another time and he his appearance and this whole sacrifice thing kicked things into motion. And now like, and this is why the spy guy is like, okay, first, what you can do is freaky. Second, you fucked everything up. You know? <laughs> yes. like, yeah. Oh, actually, <laughs> yeah. actually, I just saw something. Y'all can disagree if you want. That's fine. This literally undoes everything we just did in a way. What if the minister that has so much beef with Alex is in fact the spy? He's the, the double agent. He was posing as a minister. 
I, I had actually considered suggesting that, but we had gone with the J. Jonah Jameson thing. But Adam, what do you think? I kind of like the idea of having no one would predict the, the ministry right. to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, the, mm-hmm. that's the twist. I actually that's the like that. Twist. That's the spot. I like it a lot. I think okay. that, that feels yeah. more fresh. And uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, because like Alex has no clue. Right. I mean, yeah. all he yeah. knows of uh, JJJ is that he's like this kind of a blowhard. Yeah. But yeah. that's the whole point. That's the, yes. And, and so and, first off, we have to call him JJJ uh, for, for the minister. JJ, JJ, obviously. Well, I th- and and I think what would be really great about that is is what would really do the fake out is have it be where he's running the sacrifice like. And he's like presenting <laughs> the child to him right. to sacrifice. Right. And, and, you know, and for some reason we can put it, we can kind of plant it where for some reason the minister knows that Alex isn't going to kill him. Like maybe he saw something. Um, well, we can even have, yeah, yeah. We can definitely have it where the, the minister knows Alex isn't going to kill him, but also he kind of gives him, it gives him an out. Like he may accident, it may seem like he accidentally kicks over something during the ritual, which gives Alex a chance to grab the girl and escape. But it's, he deliberately did it, knowing that Alex would take advantage of it. Essentially, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, we have to, yeah, we have to do those. So things. yeah, we can have it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say. So that way, the audience thinks like, oh, the, well, this this guy was running the sacrifice. So yeah, obviously he's in. He he's in deep. Like he is yeah, balls deep in tracks. this. Yeah, and yeah. and then when he comes around and goes, I give you your fucking shit up, dude. You know, I think that would <laughs> be. I yeah, that, nice that, that's I love twist. it. I love it. I love it. Because I, I, the, the perfect place for Act One to end is basically where the minister's like, "What are you doing? You're fucking shit up." He's like, <laughs> yeah. "Are you helping me?" And they're, they're, they're in the closet. Yeah. He's like, "Wait, are you helping?" That, that's yeah, that's the end of Act One. And, and also, you're a man of the cloth, and you swore anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're a man of the cloth, and you swore. Ari, Ari does. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and then he, then he of course, he's leaving the pit. Yeah, perfect. I love no that. comment. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's Ari's pit. Okay. That, that's Ari. Oh, oh, easy friend. You know what you just said. All right. That's uh, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. Perfect. Well, uh, okay. well, yeah, that's, that is end of act one. And uh, Adam, our very special guest. Thank you so much for bringing Prowl and Alex to us, man. He's a lot of fun. You can tell we're having fun with them. And next week we got to get that chance to actually use and see the powers and abilities. And I mean, we have, we literally have a, a caged animal, Against an entire cult, is a kill mm-hmm. box. It's, it's gonna be a, it'll be a fun, uh, fun. Oh yeah, fun story. It's good, gonna good. be good. Just see him unleash it all. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, in fact, um, uh, I think next week we can start, and uh, you know, uh, uh, if if you can maybe, um kind of come up with like some some cool things you've had alex do in the stories obviously no spoilers or anything for your stories but but like that would be cool to like start off next week with so that way we can kind of you know integrate some of those abilities and stuff in the thing yeah oh yeah oh yeah there's there's a couple things we can do nice Nice. awesome i can't wait all righty Inside Review of Entertainment, Tech, 